How to install Oracle Database Express Edition. In this video, we're going to learn how to download and install Oracle Express Edition. To do so, go to the oracle.com website. Click on the menu icon here. Navigate to the Oracle Database link on the menu here. This menu might look different depending on when you go to the website because the website menu is constantly changing the look and feel. But regardless, go to the Oracle Database section. Scroll down to Application Development. Scroll down to the Database Languages and Tools section and click on Database Express Edition or XE. Click on the Download button here. You'll then be taken to the download page for Oracle Database XE. At the time of recording there are two versions, one for Linux and one for Windows. At the moment, Oracle does not support an XE version for Mac, so if you want to run it on Mac, there are a few options which I've highlighted on the website. We're running Windows, so we're going to click on the Windows link here. Click Accept for the Oracle License Agreement terms, then click the Download button. You'll then be taken to a logon screen. Log on using your username and password for Oracle's website, or if you don't have one, create a new account. Creating a new account is free and only takes a minute, so it's worth creating one. After you log in, you'll be prompted to save the file. Either save it directly or choose a location. The file will then start downloading. It's about 1.9 gigabytes, so it might take a little while to download. Once the zip file is downloaded, you'll need to extract it to a location. Once it's extracted, open up the folder you've extracted and scroll down to the setup.exe file. Double click on it to open it. Click yes if this warning message appears. The installer will then prepare. After a moment, you'll see this splash screen for Oracle Database 18C Express Edition. Click next. Click I accept after reading the license agreement then click Next. Choose your destination folder. In this case, it's automatically been populated, so I'm just going to click Next. In this screen, you'll be prompted to enter a password for the system accounts called Sys, System and PDB Admin. This password is one that you'll need to remember because you'll need to use it to log on to the database after you install it. So enter something that you'll remember for later. After you've entered it twice, click Next. On the summary screen, click Install. The installation of Oracle Database Express will then begin. Once the installation is finished, click on Finish. Now that Oracle Express is installed, we'll show you briefly how to create a connection to the database so you can get started. We'll be using Oracle SQL Developer here, on Mac. The process is the same if you're running this on Windows, and you'll follow similar steps if you're using a different IDE such as Toad. To download SQL Developer, go to the Oracle website and follow the steps to download it. I'll show you how to do this in a separate video. Once you've downloaded and opened SQL Developer, you'll see your connections panel on the left of the screen. This example has quite a few connections, but if it's a brand new setup for you, you won't have any. Click on the green plus button here to create a new connection. This is the new database connection window. There are a few things that you can enter here. First, enter in a name for the connection. This will make it easy for you to identify in the list of connections in SQL Developer. We've just called ours Test18. This color drop down on the right here will let you choose a color for the connection. I find this helpful to select a red color or something bold for connections that have DBA privileges so that I know that I'm running on an elevated privilege account and not to do anything that might mess up the database. Leave the database type as Oracle and start entering the user info section. In the username section, enter in sys. Select the role as sysdba and enter in the password that you entered when you installed Oracle Express. Now in the details section, you'll need to enter in the connection details. This is different to previous installations of Oracle Express. In the host name, 
enter in the word localhost if you're running this on your local machine, which you most likely are. If you're running this on a virtual machine, such as if you're installing it on a Mac like I am, you'll need to enter the IP address of your virtual machine. So you'll probably leave this as localhost, but I'll need to change this so that it works on my virtual machine. The port remains the same at 1521. Now the SID and service name is where it's different. If you leave the SID as XE, your connection won't work. We'll need to change the selection to service name and enter in XEPDB1. The reason for this is that with Oracle Database 18C and 19C and onwards, the architecture changed from having a single database to what's known as a container database and a pluggable database. The container database is like an overall area for the database and you have separate pluggable databases that are related to it. We want to log into the pluggable database, which will let us create tables and run queries like normal. And to do this, we need to enter in the service name for the pluggable database. For Oracle Express, it's called XEPDB1. Express Edition Pluggable Database 1. So this is probably the most important part you need to change. If you don't change this and leave it as the default of SID of XE, your connection will work, but you'll have some issues trying to create users and objects in the database. Once you've entered your data, click Test, and you should see a success status at the bottom of the window after a moment. If you get an error, check your connection details, such as the username, the role, the password, and the service name here. Once it's all okay, click the Save button. Your new connection will appear in the list in the window here and on the left of SQL Developer. Close the window. Now, to connect to the database using that new user, you can double click on the user on the left here. Enter in the password and click OK. After a moment, a new tab will appear with that new database user. So as you can see, a new window has been created with the new connection that we just created. You're now free to create new users and proceed with working on the database.